Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Erin and I do mostly budgeting videos like the one you're about to see here. So the first thing I have to say is thank you so much to anyone and everyone who uh, viewed my video yesterday. Um, it meant a lot to me to read your comments. I haven't gotten back to anyone. I'm not I just, I was actually overwhelmed with um, kindness and um, positive comments and support and um, all that. So I really appreciate it. It was a hard video for me to record for a lot of reasons, um, but I'm glad that I did it. So in today's video, I thought that it was time to update some sinking funds and just kind of update the budget planner as a whole. So I've read a lot of your feedback. This is actually the planner I'm using currently. It's um, by Scribbles That Matter. Um, it's embossed right here. My nails are atrocious. I just have to put that out there. I know I'm going to redo them tonight. But um, this budget planner is really nice because it kind of gives me some satisfaction um, to do bullet journaling and budgeting at the same time. So I really enjoy it. Uh, but I also recognize that it is a lot of information um, condensed onto some pretty small layouts. So even though this is a B5 journal and it is relatively large as far as bullet journals go, um, it's still a lot of information to put on these pages. So I wanted to talk about that first and also let you know that I've um, considered your feedback and I think what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to do my budgeting two ways. Um, probably starting this coming payday for my husband. I'm going to continue with this book here and I'm also going to continue working in my happy planner big. Now the reason for that and the reason why I don't mind doing that is because the happy planner big, I always want to say big happy planner. It just feels more natural saying it that way. But the big happy planner um, doesn't really take any time as far as creating layouts and, um, you know, updating it to look a certain way or give it an aesthetic. It has its own aesthetic already. So I think that, um, you know, it won't be any hassle for me to do both. And if I end up kind of weaning this away or using this as just my personal book, then I'll do that. Or maybe I'll just share certain layouts out of this one, like this one. I think this is a really helpful layout, a helpful tool for me to budget my entire year. Actually, this is about 15 months um, from October of 2020 to December of 2021 and it allows me to check off my bills as I pay them. So that's probably not something that I would replicate in the Happy Planner uh, just because the pages don't allow for it. I'd probably have to do something like that on Happy Planner notebook pages, but I just think it's easier to do it here. So I may use this as a companion to the Happy Planner, and I think that that system will work out. So um, just look forward to that. If that was what you were interested in or if that helps you at all, um, I'm going to go ahead and do both. So let's see. This is my October financial snapshot, and I don't have a lot plugged into here, you know, just like this is the day I paid my bills. These are my paydays, my personal paydays. I haven't plugged in my husband's because last week was the first week he actually received a paycheck for his new job. And um, for a while, while he's doing some training and his hours are more sporadic, it's not going to be full paychecks that we can look forward to, but um, that's okay because it all is going to come with time. Um, so I understand as far as far as I know, I think they get paid every Friday. So uh, tomorrow is October 16th. So we can be looking forward to his pay tomorrow. Now I won't get paid again until October 23rd. And in the meantime, we don't really have anything else coming in. We're both pretty busy right now. Um, I was taking a much needed break from Grubhub and he is working a lot of very unusual hours. So um, for now, our two paychecks are the only thing we have coming in. Um, as far as side income, you know, maybe I'll get some money from YouTube views this month, but I don't ever really count on that because I don't really have that kind of a channel, um, you know, where I have regular money coming in or certain amounts coming in. Um, but I'm grateful for anything, you know, that 
actually occurs. I'm actually looking for a pen right here, or a marker rather. I don't really want to use this color. I want to update my sinking funds. Um, I did a couple of things. I, I earned some money by selling some things. And that's a great way to bring in extra money. I've done, you know, videos on ways to earn extra money. And one of them, of course, is to kind of look to what you have. Um, look to what you have that's of value, not just to you, but, you know, that could have some value to someone else. And if you're not using it or you no longer need it or it's just something you're ready to part with, go ahead and try to sell it. So Facebook Marketplace is a great way to sell things. If you want to stick to local, of course, Posh Poshmark is a great way to sell clothing. Um, eBay, I haven't done eBay since like the mid-2000s, like 2006, 2007. So I'm really not versed in eBay as far as selling or buying any longer. Um, I used to sell a lot of clothing on eBay back in the day, but I think that it just got to be too much with their fees and their percentages that they took. And it, it was a great thing to use in the beginning, but I think that it just became so super commercial and, um, they were just looking to, you know, have hidden fees, not hidden fees. I mean, they're obvious fees, but just expensive. So, um, of course, Craigslist, um, you know, there's lots of different things, um, methods that you can use. Of course, you could have a yard sale, a garage sale. Um, right now, I personally wouldn't go down that route because I wouldn't want to interact with a lot of people just because of quarantine. But, you know, it, it all depends on what you feel comfortable with. So, I sold some things. I sold an old iPad. I sold my, um, my original iWatch. I was going to pass that along to um, one of my nieces, but you know, I'm not going to, or I, I chose not to. So I did that. I sold a Fitbit and an old camera and a couple of Kindles. I had a lot of Kindles over, not a lot, but I think I had three total Kindles over the years. Um, just like electronics and stuff. Actually, I chose the things and my husband um, listed them on his Facebook. So I was able to earn some money and I was just excited to be able to bring some extra income in. So I thought, what can I do with found money? And the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, with found money is either pay down your debt because it's money you wouldn't have had anyway, or you can put it into savings. Now, of course, you could do anything. You could treat yourself. You could do whatever you want. But for me, I wanted to add to my sinking funds. I had a goal in mind that I wanted to get to and I just thought this was the best way. So I'm going to put my Capital One savings accounts um, on the screen. And I just want to let you know that I am at 12. Oh, man. Oh, very poor, Aaron. Very poor, sloppy accounting. <laughs> I didn't mean to color, color this in. I'm at $12,000 now. So I can cover color in $11,900. My next block is 12325 and I'm not there yet. But I'm happy to say I am at $12,000 in my emergency fund. And I could not be more excited about that. The only way I could be more excited about that is if I was at my goal for my emergency fund. But that's going to take some time. You know, I think sinking funds and savings for most people, um, for me at least, are something that you just kind of have to tend to over time. And you'll get there. Uh, it may be slow. It may be sometimes faster than others, but eventually if you just tend to it and you keep on top of it, you keep your goals in your sights, you will reach your finish line. So I just wanted to put that out there. Just don't give up if you're somebody who's like, oh my gosh, I have debt. I can't even think about savings at this point. I was in that exact same boat. I had, you know, almost $40,000 in credit card debt and loan debt at one point. We did. Um, not quite that high, but nearly. Um, and it took a lot of uh, work and perseverance, but we just buckled down and anything extra we got, we just put it on there. And eventually it came down. And I never thought that I would be in a position to say, I don't have to worry about credit card debt right now. I can worry about savings. Um, but eventually you'll get there because I can say I've been all over the map with my finances, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I can say that if you just concentrate and you keep plugging away, you'll get to where you need to be. So here um, I added an extra 
little bit here so I could color in this block. I really wanted to color in that block. So for my savings fund, I'm now at 3120 exactly. Um, for dogs, I'm still at $100, so I can't color it any higher. I'm not really focusing on this right now. And for my Christmas club, I'm still at $1,200. And honestly, guys, I don't think I'm going to get any higher. I don't think I really need to. I'm trying to work on my, oops, sorry about that. I'm trying to work on my Christmas list now. Um, the things that I need to buy, that I want to buy, that I want to do. And I'm really trying to keep the number in mind that I have, which is $1,200 to where we are going to stay. So, you know, it may work out like that. It may not, but I'm going to do my best to stay within those limitations. And um, if I have more money to add to it eventually, I guess I can, but that's just my thought on that. So before tax time next year, which is usually for us around um, the end of February, the beginning of March, I do want to have $2,000 here. Um, any more than that, like I said, I'm not really going to worry about it um, because usually we do get a refund, but this year has been so crazy and so weird for us financially with, you know, unemployment and, um, cutting back wages and all, all kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm just not, I just don't know where we're going to land with that. But worst case scenario, we may owe a little bit. I don't know. I, I, I highly, highly doubt it. But at least we have this $2,000 buffer that we can use toward that. So again, my main priority right now is the sinking or this emergency fund. It's just where I want to be as far as reaching the first finish line. All right. So in October, um, I did pay all of these bills. I just never checked them off here. So as you can see, this is a detailed overview for that month. And I wish I would have checked them off, but I didn't. So I'm going to do that now because I paid every single thing except trash. And our trash just wasn't due at that time. Our trash is due every three months. Now, I guess I could put 20 bucks aside every month, but I don't. So um, the other thing, why did I say that? I said that like October's over. That that was a very strange way for me to put that. Um, but I did pay all the bills for October on the 1st. Uh, we're still kind of using this schematic here. And right now we're uh, just approaching the end of week three. And I will have uh, some of my husband's money to be able to put into this column. Again, I don't have anything coming in right now. And then week four, that is my money that I can count on. And then week five, we'll see. So, um, yeah, I'll be able to do this receipt and tally everything up and look at all my progress, good or bad, um, at the end of this month. So, like I said, as of this Friday, I'm going to be doing the budget here and I'm going to be do doing the budget in the Happy Planner. So, you can see this is my overview for my weekly budget for the very first couple days of October that ended on a Saturday. And this was the one for the 4th through the 10th. And this is the one we're currently in now. So I am going to have to um, account for some variables. But I, I have a little bit of extra money. So I think that's going to help us this week as we plan for next week. So whenever I list my variable expenses, which is usually on a Thursday or a Friday, I am planning for the next week. So when I put grocery money here, it's grocery money for the following week. So I'm always just like a little step ahead of things, um, which is good. It makes me feel very comfortable and secure. But yeah, that's where we're at. So for sinking funds, I'll probably update this tomorrow or Friday, rather when I do the budget. And I will update my credit tracker. As you can see, I started doing that down here. If you have any interest at all on why my credit is where it is, ugh. Yeah, I, I address that usually when I do these overviews, but I have addressed that in um, separate videos. So here is the rest of October. As you can see, it's just, it's simple, but it's complicated. It's a lot. So I definitely understand that. And then here is where I will be doing my October monthly budget recap. So I even have a little scoring system down here that I'm going to color in the stars as far as how I thought we did this month, you know, so that that's kind of fun. I don't know. For me, this is a little bit more of an enjoyable, fun way to do things, but I can also see 
you know, the value in the simplicity of using the Happy Planner because it's just so nicely bordered already. It just it has these nice blocks that you can work with and it's just so nice. I use the vertical layout, by the way, when I'm talking about that. So that's kind of where we're at with sinking funds. I'm really happy about it. I'm proud of it. You know, if we ever had to borrow from our sinking funds for any type of reason, I mean, of course we could, but I'm really trying not to touch them until at least I reach the goal. So, you know, if we eventually reach the goal for like, let's say savings, and I want to use part of that for something, then I can start building it up to meet that goal again. This is kind of where I would like to be at permanently, but you know, best laid plans. You guys know how that goes. You can plan for anything and then life will actually show you what is the real plan. <laughs> so um, we can only do our best. But yeah, so this is where I'm at with this notebook. Um, this, it's a great notebook, but again, I won't be purchase, repurchasing this um, just because of how it arrived. Um, it was a little dinged up a bit, but I do love the 160 GSM weight paper. There is no shadowing, and when I'm doing any type of journaling, bullet journaling, that is one thing that is so incredibly distracting to me is any type of shadowing. So if I start to see that, I start to get sad about it. <laughs> and I know that sounds probably so weird, but I just think it's it's just extremely distracting visually um so yeah so that's where we're at and I thought I would do a little update and then Friday I will talk to you guys about um his second paycheck and where we're at with that and how we're going to allocate that and make that work for us bringing it down to a zero based budget hopefully like we always do but I also thought it was helpful to come on here and share with you guys the fact that, you know, selling a few things around the house, putting them on Facebook Marketplace in our case, really did end up helping us. And I'm excited about it. We sold um, a couple tiny pieces of furniture and... I don't know, I was just really, really happy about it. So as we move forward, you know, I'm going to start listing things that I may be able to part with and see, you know, where that gets us. Um, bringing us a little bit closer to our goals financially too. Um, I also love to donate money, I mean, or donate items. Um, you know, I think that that's also a great way to do things, but once in a while, it is nice to be able to sell things and recoup a little bit of your cost. Um, so yeah, that is my budget bullet journal. And actually I have been working in my regular bullet journal, which I got a little sidetracked from because I just had a lot going on. Um, but I am still keeping up with things and, you know, just kind of taking things as they go. This is kind of, um, my October and stuff, uh, writing down a lot of stuff. So if you guys want to see a flip through anytime soon, just let me know because I would be happy to share this with you as well. So I hope you guys are doing well. Again, thank you so much for the support and the kindness in yesterday's video. Um, and I guess that is about it. So hopefully I will see you guys very soon. Take care.